In this video we will cover a range of information about the castle, architecture and layout, a historic timeline walkthrough, what you can get up to at the castle today, the essential need to know visitor information before you journey to the castle for a day out. Old Sarum rests upon ancient Iron Age earthworks dating back centuries. These earthworks form a circular rampart with a protected ditch. Fast forward to the 11th century and a Norman Mott and Bailey castle was built in the centre of this site. But what exactly was here? The original layout was quite extensive. There were outer ramparts, an inner bailey, a gatehouse, keep, towers, halls, living quarters and even a cathedral in the northwest corner. Going back further, the original Iron Age fortification featured an earth wall and a single entrance with protective horns. With the Norman conquest, William the Conqueror revamped the site. He erected a central mock, creating a massive outer bailey around it. Many of the structures were initially made of wood, though a stone keep was added later. In the Iron Age, the outer defences were expansive, surrounding a large 29.7 acres. Inside this outer wall was the outer bailey, created later by William the Conqueror's changes. To enter the inner bailey, visitors crossed a drawbridge over a ditch and passed through it inside were towers, a keep, halls, apartments, a courtyard house and a cathedral. The courtyard house is a significant architectural wonder, designed in a cloister-like style. It had four ranges, each with a distinct purpose, including a kitchen, a hall, a private chapel and even the king's quarters. The original cathedral was awe-inspiring with a length of 183.7 feet. It featured transepts that formed a cross shape, a laity entrance and cloisters for the convent. The bishop's palace with its hall and garden was situated nearby. Today, the earthworks and hornwork are well preserved while much of the stone foundation is gone. Visitors can cross a steep wooden bridge to access the inner bailey through the 12th century gatehouse. Unfortunately, time has taken its toll and the buildings, including the keep, are in ruins, but a fairly well-preserved wall remains near the northern cloister of the cathedral. Historic Timeline Walkthrough Old Sarum is an ancient site of an Iron Age earthworks fortification, an 11th century castle, and a large cathedral. The site acted as a major administrative centre throughout its history. Built in 1086 at the command of William the Conqueror, the site was abandoned by the 15th century, though it remained a rotten borough until 1832, 400 BC. Iron Age Hillfort. Historians believe the original Iron Age fortification existed on the site over 2,000 years ago. Based on excavations and other data, the site likely included numerous huts surrounded by the defensive earthworks. 43 AD. Roman occupation. The Roman conquest led the site to become Sorviaginum. From a military standpoint, Sorviaginum was a strategic site, as three Roman roads led to the fort. Unfortunately, it's unknown what the settlement may have looked like though it's theorised that it may have consisted of an interior military complex with a civilian settlement outside of the rampart. 1069. Castle constructed. William the Conqueror noted the strategic placement of Old Sarum and felt it was ideal for a castle. 1075. Cathedral construction. The Council of London agreed that several bishoprics should be moved. As such, the bishopric of Sherborne and Wilton was moved to Old Sarum and the cathedral construction began under Bishop Herman. The cathedral was under Bishop Osmond upon its completion. 1086. The Oath of Sarum. During a time of peril and great threats of invasion, William the Conqueror gathered his council and a massive number of English noblemen including many of the king's men in the outer bailey of Old Sarum Castle. 1102 to 1135. Castle Keep. The keep was made of stone, the first building on the site not made of timber. It's believed that Bishop Roger ordered the building of the courtyard house and the bishop's palace. 1139 to 1140. The end of an era. Roger's death caused the end of massive forward momentum at Old Sarum. The castle was left under Bishop Jocelyn who decorated the newly extended cathedral and added a cloister to the bishop's palace. 1171 to 1189. More buildings and Alina's imprisonment. Though some minor renovations may have taken place, significant building at Old Sarum didn't resume until 1171. Around this time, the gatehouse was renovated and a drawbridge was constructed, and the inner bailey was enclosed by a stone wall. It was also during this period that Alina of Aquitaine, King Henry I's wife, was held prisoner at Old Sarum after encouraging her children to lead a revolt against their father. 1194. Castle Neglect. Old Sarum Castle's importance as a military fortification had long since passed, and those in the surrounding towns had become unhappy with the site. As a result, royal approval was provided to move the cathedral to a new location. 1220. Cathedral Moves. Over two decades after receiving royal approval, the cathedral was finally moved to Salisbury. By this time, much of Old Sarum's population had left. 1226. Tombs Move. Bishop Osmond, Bishop Roger and Bishop Josephine had been laid to rest at the Old Sarum Cathedral, so when the cathedral moved, their bodies were moved with it. After their bodies were removed, 
the clergy abandoned the site and royal interest in the site dwindled. 1240, castle in ruins. After the old Siren population continued to decline, the castle was unused and left derelict. 1327 to 1377, castle repairs. By this time, many of the buildings were abandoned. Despite this, hundreds of pounds were spent on repairs under King Edward III. Around 1366, the courtyard house underwent extreme renovations. The castle remained in use as an administrative centre until the 1400s. 1514, materials scavenge. During the reign of King Henry VIII, he granted what remained of the site to Thomas Compton, who was given the right to do what he pleased with the remaining masonry and additional materials. 1540. A castle in ruins. Upon his visit, John Leland noted Old Sarum Castle was no more than earthworks. By this point, only the foundations remained, and not a single building stood. Despite a meagre population, Old Sarum continued on as a borough, sending members to Parliament for another 300 years. 1832. Reform Act. The 1832 Reform Act finally put an end to Old Sarum as a rotten borough. 1882-1972. Ancient Monument. The Ancient Monuments Protection Act listed the ruins at Old Sarum as a scheduled monument. In 1972, the castle ruins and cathedral were listed as a Grade 1 site. Present. Today, the ruinous foundation of Old Sarum Castle, the cathedral, and the ancient Iron Age earthworks are managed by English Heritage and open to the public as a tourist attraction. Things to do at the castle today. Old Sarum Castle has much for you and your family to enjoy on your visiting. Thrilling Halloween celebrations, epic night tournaments, and heart-pounding live jousting. Guided tours of Old Sarum Castle for those who want an immersive experience. These tours are a treat, but they require a bit of planning. Book in advance, at least 30 days prior, and gather a group of at least 11 adventure seekers up to a maximum of 50. An English heritage expert will lead you on a 45-minute journey through history. Curious about what you'll discover during your visit? Get up close and personal with the medieval castle and cathedral ruins. Explore the intricate layouts and historic foundations that have stood the test of time. Experience an ancient hillfort that's more than 2,000 years old. Walk the same paths as those who lived here centuries ago and marvel at the well-preserved Hornwork Bank, Ditch and Circular Mound. Explore the scenic footpaths. As you roam the lush grassy areas, you'll be surrounded by the stunning chalkland landscape. The Outer Bailey offers the perfect space for kite flying, ball games and even croquet and giant Jenga during the summer months. All the equipment you need is right here. Kids are free to roam and learn. The open space is perfect for them to explore. Plus, there are quiz sheets to keep their minds engaged. Essential need to know information before you visit. Plan your visit knowing that Old Sarum Castle is open every day from 10am to 5pm but remember, these times might change depending on the season or special events happening on site. For the exact opening and closing hours on the day you're planning to come, just head over to the Old Sarum calendar on the English Heritage website. Admission fees for Old Sarum Castle vary based on the date, season and whether special events are happening. To know the exact cost for the day you're planning, just hop onto the link in the description and follow the plan your visit or book your ticket links. If you booked your tickets online before 8.45am on your visit day, you'll get a nice 10% advance booking discount. If you decide to purchase tickets on site, you won't be able to snag this discount. Before you head over, here are some things you might want to know. You can grab food and drinks from vending machine, but sorry, no on-site cafes. There's a pub nearby and more food options just a quick 5 minute drive away. Feel free to pack a picnic. There are great spots with soft grass in the inner and outer baileys. Don't forget to check out the gift shop at the top of the bridge. It's got all sorts of souvenirs, from jams to wines, even toys for kids. Restrooms are near the car park, including accessible options and baby changing facilities. Dogs are welcome. Keep them on a lead while exploring the ruins. In the outer bailey, they can roam off leash if they're well behaved. There are also dog bowls outside the gift shop. Most of the site is wheelchair friendly. The main path is paved though there's some gravel. Wheelchair and mobility scooter users can explore the lower castle ruins with ease. Wheelchair users might need assistance on the slope and the wooden bridge. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you found it enjoyable or at the very least learnt something new. Please help me continue making these videos and documenting history by subscribing and liking or visit crazyaboutcastles.com and if you purchase the tickets please consider doing it through my website. Better yet, if you want to help preserve sites such as this then consider purchasing the English Heritage Membership, also found through the link in the description.